to about the halfway point of the show. Hope everybody's doing well so far. Uh, my name is Jeff LaFan. I'm an applications engineer with St. Gobain Performance Plastics. Uh, I'm based out of Portage, Wisconsin, uh, but as you'll see in a minute, we have facilities all over the world. Uh, start off here with uh, our agenda. I'm going to start with a little St. Gobain background. I'm uh, going to give you some definitions on uh, what micromolding is, what's involved in micromolding. We're going to talk about the opportunities that micromolding presents. Uh, we're going to discuss the materials that you can use in micromolding, uh, specifically focusing on silicone. That's our specialty. Uh, we're going to talk about processes. Um, we're going to talk about mold and part design, uh, how we can get a micromolded product. Uh, we're going to discuss applications, and then finally a conclusion. Okay. So who is St. Gobain? Uh, we are a materials-based company, meaning uh, that we deal in, in multiple types of materials from medical to industrial products. Corporate headquarters is located in Paris, France. Uh, we were founded in 1665. Uh, story goes that uh, Saint-Gobain made the uh, mirrors for the Hall of Mirrors in Versailles. So, very first project. It's a pretty big one. We're uh, over a thousand consolidated companies, uh, 54 billion in sales last year, publicly held, and uh, we have 195,000 employees in 54 countries. So, uh, we have 14 manufacturing locations globally, uh, three R&D, uh, Paris, Boston, and Shanghai. Uh, we again are um, material science experts, so uh, what we do in particular in the medical device market is custom compounding, PVC, silicone, and TPEs, okay, TPE molding and extrusion, and then silicone molding and extrusion. And the silicone molding on a micro scale is going to be the focus here today. Uh, rapid prototyping out of our Portage, Wisconsin facility um, from our development center is one of our great strong points. Uh, in general, for most silicone-only products, we can get you 10 parts in 10 days from a steel tool. Not aluminum, um, no other material. Steel tool, nearly production ready. Okay? Uh, we are also two-shot molding experts and, as you'll see today, micro-molding as well. Uh, so what is micro-molding? Um, as our electronics machining um, and dosing abilities improve, the scale at which we can effectively mold improves. So what does this mean? Um, electronics, we're using servo motors rather than hydraulics. We're using lots of electronics to get the precision that we need, both in the machining and the dosing. And when I say dosing, I mean how we get the material, the raw silicone material, into the tooling. So the better we get at this, the smaller and smaller we can make products. Um, Micromolding involves very small masses. We're talking around a thousandth of a gram, 0 0.001, very, very small. Uh, we're also talking thin walls, um, around uh, one and a half thousandths of an inch or 0 0.04 millimeters for those in a metric world. Um, and we're also talking well, intricate features on very, very um, large parts. So you can have a large part that has a very, very small feature. We would still consider that a micro molding possibility. Okay? Opportunities in silicone, and uh, more opportunities in uh, silicone micro molding. Minimally invasive surgery, uh, also known as MIS. Uh, we're converting a lot of open surgical procedures to these minimally invasive procedures. So the, the smaller we can make the products, the less invasive they are for the patient, um, faster healing, et cetera, et cetera. So it offers the surgeons and the patients um, much better results via shortened recovery times and hospital stays. So we shorten that time, less cost on the front and the back end, okay? Minimize scarring for the patient, also an advantage. Um, often fewer complications to the small size. Uh, much lower cost, um, material cost mostly, okay? Um, and we can also provide customers with innovative state-of-the-art products that have never been manufactured before. So micromolding, we're really on the front end of this technology. Um, Thermoplastic micromolding has been around for maybe a decade. Um, silicone micromolding uh, for a portion of that time, but we're really on the, the cutting edge of making products that are small enough to, to really enforce these minimally invasive surgeries and, and make them work. Okay? And uh, additionally, micro overmolding. Um, we can eliminate and reduce secondary operations and assembly. So rather than having two very small components that must be assembled in a secondary operation, we can overmold the silicone onto any type of substrate, thermoplastic, metal, uh, a harder durometer silicone, um, and really improve the process and, and save cash on the, on the back end of assembly. Okay. We can also reduce the number of components, as I said, and it enables you to use alternate resins or fillers to improve the physical and mechanical or electrical properties. So we can add, subtract, whatever you need from the silicone uh, formulation or even the thermoplastic formulation if it's uh, an overmolding product to get the results that you need. Okay, examples of micro overmolding functions. We're talking very small contained valves, again, um, 
this is where we would take a thermoplastic uh, or metal object, overmold a seal onto it, right? Uh, integrated seals, again, those can be O-ring type seals, not necessarily valves. Uh, soft tips for surgical tools, uh, a lot of our focus is in ophthalmic markets, so soft tips are crucial when you're working around the eye. Okay, microsensory components and microfluidics, so very, very small fluid paths for both laboratory operations and uh, production or hospital ops. Okay, as far as materials go, there are many, many materials to choose from. Uh, obviously thermoplastics for micromolding, I think that's something that most all of you have seen sometime in the past. Um, thermoplastic elastomers would fall into this group. Um, these are some of your the, called TPEs, if you've heard that term used, right? These are thermoplastics that act like elastomers but, but don't have uh, quite the same uh, staying power um, and qualities as silicone does. Uh, you can also micromold thermosets. Okay, we can micromold metals, right? it's something that we do not do, of course. And then there are elastomers. Um, and in particular, the elastomers, we're talking silicone. Okay. Uh, and why would you choose silicone to produce your medical product? Um, many good features, right? It's chemically inert. It is biocompatible, meaning it has superior compatibility with human tissue and body fluids. Uh, it's odorless and tasteless and it does not support bacterial growth. So three very, very huge advantage in the biocompatibility bio department. Um, and it's also easily sterilizable, or sorry, pardon me. Uh, and it won't stain or corrode other materials, backing up to the biocompatibility. Uh, as far as sterilization goes, ethylene oxide gas, easily done with silicones, gamma or ebene, irradiation as well, and also steam autoclaving, okay? Uh, Again, why would you choose silicone for medical devices? It has a low compression set. And what is compression set? If you deform the material, uh, will it go back to its original form once you remove the force that's deforming it, right? Silicone has a very, very high resilience. Right? So it's, it's excellent for use in very compressive operations. Okay, it has a wide range of durometers. Um, for micromolding, we use liquid silicone rubbers, right? Not gum rubbers. And we have duros from around 5 up to 80 shore A durometer. Uh, very wide range. Uh, we have a huge temperature range as well. We're talking uh, minus 75 up to 600, so minus 60 to 315C operating range. Okay, that's not our manufacturing range. That's the, the operating range for the finished product. Okay, it's a very high tear strength, okay, up to 220 ppi, pounds per inch. That's about 4.5 uh, milligrams per meter. I know that's in, uh, uh, an odd unit, that, that milligrams per meter, but uh, ppi is sort of the U.S. standard for that. Um, has a very high tensile strength, up to 1,500 psi, about 10 megapascals. Um, an excellent elongation, up to 1,250 percent. Okay, that 1,250 is a huge number, but that's for a very, very low durometer material. Extremely good elongation. Um, and there's also great flexibility with silicone. Okay, silicone material options, all right? We have self-bonding material options. So if we are doing an overmolded um, product, we have grades of silicone, some of them off the shelf, that will overmold and bond to polycarbonates, nylons, some metals, okay? Lots of options there. We have antimicrobial additives that we can include in the dosing system. Um, we have many other enhanced properties. So if there's a particular property you're looking for, if it is a modulus, a durometer, anything of those sorts, uh, we can generally get there by additives and fillers, okay? We also have rapid curing options. Um, as well as custom formulations. St. Gobain has many custom formulations that come out of our Northboro R&D facility um, in Massachusetts. So uh, if you have any questions concerning that, that's uh, something we can take care of. All right, uh, silicone micromolding process. Uh, when you're micromolding, you're looking at different grades of equipment than you would use for a standard molding process, okay? So we're looking at the molding and the part handling. So both ends of the spectrum. So actually making the part and then getting the part from the press into a package, it's necessary to have something that's different from what you would do in a standard op, okay? Then the packaging itself needs to be improved. And then metrology. Everybody needs to be in agreement on how you're going to measure the parts, okay? Uh, the specialized micromolding press. Uh, three big items that differentiate a micromolding press from a standard molding press, okay? We have extremely high injection pressures. Uh, we're talking greater than 10,000 PSI or, or 70 megapascals. I know for a thermoplastic that doesn't sound that uh, extreme. For silicone, pretty high injection pressures. Generally don't get that high. Um, high injection velocities, 3 inches per second, 80 millimeters per second. So really high. We're, we're blasting these things in there about as quickly as we can before they cure. 
Okay, and then we have these short cure times. So that, again, that's why we have to have the high pressure, high velocity because we have such short cure times because the, the, the overall cross section of the product so thin that they're curing in seconds rather than uh, you know tens of seconds for a normal macro product. Okay. Uh, for part handling, the issues that we encounter um, are myriad in scope. So we have static, air, so HVAC or even human breath, right? We're not talking a sneeze, just breathing on the parts if you're trying to handle them is going to make them uh, disappear, right? Um, disseminate, I suppose. Uh, there's tackiness issues, uh, orientation issues, defect detection, and other human errors. And the only way to bypass all of these is by automation and proper handle. And all of the other standard methods of, of, of handling products um, manually will not do. So these automation solutions, um, tabletop robotics, such as this small robot, is something that we've been implementing on a regular basis, right? Uh, you have transfers, different methods for orientation, destats to pull all the static electricity out of the product so that they can be handled a little more easily. Okay, uh, Count, because you're never going to be able to count these things manually, and in fact, you're going to have difficulty weighing them even. Uh, to get the right resolution on a weigh count scale that you can just weigh the product. So you need to count them as they're being produced. Okay, and also defect ins inspection. So um, in general, for all of these, uh, cameras and robotics are going to be the things that are going to get you where you need to go with micromolding. Okay, as far as packaging, the recommendations that we have is we need some customization. So you can't just throw these parts into a bag and send it out to the customer. They need to have specific packaging. Um, DSTAT packaging in particular is very important. And then packaging, again, that is agreed on by the manufacturer and the customer so that when you're loading it, you can do it most easily. And when they're unloading it, they can do it most easily. Um, smaller counts or multiple packages um, are a great option. Picking and placing the parts directly from the molding into the um, packaging, and then direct to packaging via SBC control. So you wouldn't have any quality controls outside of the work cell. So we need complete integration to truly micro mold on an efficient scale. Everything needs to be done at the press, uh, molding, inspection, packaging, out the door. Less handling, better. Okay. Uh, as far as metrology goes, um, you need some specialized micro and nano visual measuring systems. Um, a lot of the world of silicone historically has been based on um, optical comparators. That time is over, okay? <laughs> we, we need much more specialized systems. So uh, this is an example of one of our measuring systems. Um, this part here, you'll see that a little later on, but um, we're viewing that at high magnification because standard magnification for a part like this will not do, okay? And the quality inspection method um, needs to be standardized between yourself and your customer. Um, that's one of the downfalls uh, that we've seen for a lot of customers is that they don't understand when they're coming to us with a micro product that they need to be incredibly specific about how it's going to be measured. Not what dimension needs to be measured, but how it's going to be measured. When you're measuring, uh, trying to measure a part on this scale, lighting plays a, a role that is much stronger than it is on a macro part, right? We all know that lighting is important. Focus is important. On a part this small, both of those things are terribly important. Okay. When it comes to mold and part design, um, as I mentioned before, we've had great advancements in machining equipment. So when I say machining equipment, I'm talking about the equipment that makes the mold in which we make the part. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to cut steel very, very precisely. All right, so we're talking EDM, electrodynamic um, discharge, or electric discharge machine, pardon me. We're talking acid etching, uh, high-speed milling. This is an example of one of our newer high-speed milling machines, um, or laser engraving. Okay, we need very tight tolerances and uh, we need to be pretty cost competitive. So we, we can't be spending um, multitudes more than we would on a standard tool. Um, you will spend a little bit more on the processing, on the equipment, but because you're using less steel, you end up kind of at a wash, maybe a little bit more, but competitive nonetheless. Okay. As far as part design goes, um, we're looking at some non-conventional options, right? So for part design, you can have very sharp corners, standard macro product, sharp corners generally out the door, difficult to do. The smaller the part is, the better you can pack it out, the more sharp corners you can have. Okay? You can have wall thickness variations, and again, because of these high injection pressures that you're push pushing the material in with, um, you can get those wall thickness variations and, and they're not such an issue as they are on a larger part. Uh, and you can also work with undercuts, and that is something that is specific to silicone molding, right? Silicone has such great grain strength that you can have uh, undercuts that you wouldn't be able to have in, in, say, a thermoset or thermoplastic product. You don't need slides for the undercuts. You can just peel the part right out. Um, conventional ideas, though, uh, would be something like gating, right? So sub or pin gates are the optimal methods 
for um, gating these parts. Again, with a 7-pin gate, it's going to, to come off on its own on demolding. You're not going to have to do any additional trimming because, again, any type of handling for these micro-molded parts, not good. All right. And uh, also, you want to put it just like standard molding in a non-critical location. Okay, so you want to try to get your gate in a spot where if you have a bit of a vestige, uh, ideally no vestige, right? But if, it, if it's there, it's in a non-critical location. But again, on these small scales, often every location is critical. Okay, and for part design, um, we can make very small through holes. So we're talking less than three thousandths of an inch or 0.08 millimeters. So very, very small through holes with very small pens. We can make very thin walls due to the short flow distances, right? So we're making these extremely small products, very high pressures. We can make very, very thin walls. Um, and there's little concern of shrink variation. Again, the cure time is so fast that um, the cross-linking occurs before you can get a lot of shrinkage. Your cross-sections are so small um, that we're, we're not really concerned with shrink variation at all. Okay. Also regarding part design, we want to think combinations of products. All right. So we want to eliminate secondary assembly processes. We want to do this via overmold or two-shot molding. So overmolding is taking a base product, placing it via some automated or, or hand load. We don't like that, but we can do it, right? Uh, into a generally a vertical tool setup and overmolding a silicone um, feature onto it. Two-shot molding is taking uh, a single tool that rotates or transfers inside in a single machine, molding the thermoplastic or silicone and then silicone over the top of that, right? So combinations of products, less assembly after the fact. Okay, so we can overmold substrates um, and they're virtually unlimited. Right, and uh, for two-shot materials, we can do polycarbonates, polyamides, polyoxymethylenes, other silicones, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, for metals, I haven't seen yet a combination of a powder injection molding metal machine with a silicone going over it, but that's probably somewhere out in the future. So uh, something to look forward to. Okay. And here's an example of uh, a small part that we have. Uh, I've got a slide later on that shows the dimensions of this, but uh, you can see right here, this is, um, the blue portion is a little um, polycarbonate port here, and this is a silicone product molded over the top. Oh, and here we go. I wasn't, I'd forgotten that slide was next, all right? So looking at this thing, again, this is the polycarbonate hub, and what we have here is we ground two pins that were inserted through the polycarbonate pits, and right here, they're ground to fit so that we have a complete fluid channel running through this product. Its overall length is 192 thousandths, right? Pretty small. The lettering atop here is only three thousandths wide, and we have these 11 thousandths ridges um, running along the bottom. And again, the uh, flow path running through is around 14 thousandths, maybe a little bigger. So, right, this is very small. But in a moment, you'll see a part that's even smaller than this. Right? So micromolding in St. Gobain. So we have our definitions, right? Parts weighing less than one thousandth of a gram, and parts in size of 50 thousandths in diameter or smaller. Right? We're, we're moving smaller than that, but that's kind of our upper limit. That's the, the top of the range. right? Uh, this is, the again, stepping in here, the product we're going to look at next. And you can see we have uh, examples of this and the other product at our booth. Um, for you to take a look at, but this is a dime, right? Give me a, a little relative uh, scale there, okay? And for materials, we're, we're looking at silicone-only parts or bonded parts, and for these bonded parts, we're talking over-molding or two-shot molding, so I just discussed. Um, we have these self-bonding silicones. Again, there are some off-the-shelf self-bonding silicones, but we also have St. Gobain's proprietary BioCell SB. If you have something that you want to bond to, come to us, and there's a good chance that we have a formulation to fit that, okay? All right, and here is a uh, marked up drawing of that part that you just saw, okay? So we're looking at uh, around 200 thousandths in length, right? The lettering here on the top, each letter is only a thousandth wide, right? And that is um, standing proud, right? So each letter is standing proud out of the silicone, right? Down here, the Performance Plastics logo, that is sunken in, right? Um, and each one of those letters, again, is a thousandth, and we're separated by about two thousandths. So very, very small and 92 thousandths tall. So, and again, we have this product at our booth if you want to come by. We've got it under a little microscope with a PC so you can take a look at it, uh, not strain your eyes. Okay, so reasons to consider micromolding. Um, cover this one more time. Um, 
the benefits for medical devices is that it decreases the overall size of the product, right? So we're going from macro to micro. We are allowing for creations of products that were never possible before. And most of these are some type of minimally invasive option, right? So we, we want to do the, the most work in the smallest amount of space with the least amount of physical damage that we can, okay? Uh, improving life for the patient and the, and the surgeon. Uh, we're reducing the complexity of assembling the product. So we're, we're doing both over molding and two shot molding, right? We're taking a product, placing it into the mold, putting a silicone substrate of some type over it. Or we're two shot molding where we're doing both of these things in a single tool and machine. And we're also reducing the number of components. Um, using, again, integrated fluid pads, integrated valves, soft touch, any kind of integration that we can combine with the products. Okay, more application examples. Um, the minimally invasive surgery, we're talking laparoscopic, thoracoscopic, um, ophthalmic, again, which is a, a big part of our business, um, advanced drug delivery, vascular devices, uh, catheter components, and IV therapy. So, any close? Bye. All right. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Um, that's right at the end here, so I'm uh, willing to take some questions. Before we get to that, I wanted to hit on our contact info. Um, St. Gobain, again, molding the impossible. We are found at uh, medical.stgobain.com on the World Wide Web. You can uh, reach us via email at medical.stgobain.com, um, by phone, 1-800-236-7600. Thank you very much.